part two of our optimization problem. So we have an ellipse in R3. It's gonna be given as the intersection of the cylinder with this plane. The problem is to find the maximum and minimum values of the function f of x, y, z equal to x times z on the ellipse. In part one, we solve the problem by parametrizing the ellipse. So here, we were able to turn our problem into a problem of single variable calculus. In this video, I want to solve the problem using Lagrange multipliers with two constraints. So we start by reviewing how we use Lagrange multipliers. Now, we start with a function that we want to maximize or minimize. We're going to have a set of equations, which we call the constraint equations. So in this case, we have g1 and g2, both equal to zero. And these functions are going to describe the object that we're going to maximize or minimize our function f on. So these are going to be the equations that correspond to these equations that describe the ellipse. Then, I'm going to define a new function capital F equal to little f plus lambda g1 plus mu g2. Next step, we're going to take our function capital F, we're going to find its partial derivatives, set them equal to zero, take our constraint equations, and then we're going to find all solutions to these five equations simultaneously. Once we have those solutions, we compare to find our maximum and minimum. Let's run through our checklist. So I have small f equal to x times z, g1 is x squared plus y squared minus 1 equals 0, g2 is z minus y plus 1 equal to 0. I form capital F, then we take the partials with respect to x, y, and z. Here we're going to treat lambda and mu as constants. So with respect to x, this term goes to z, this term goes to 2x times lambda, this term goes to 0. We set it equal to 0. With respect to y, this term goes to 0. Here we get 2y times lambda. Here I get minus 1 times mu. We set it equal to 0. With respect to z, this term goes to x. This term goes to 0. This term goes to 1 times mu. We set it equal to 0. Now, we want to start by trying to eliminate mu and lambda from the equations. So if we want to focus on mu, we have from equation 3 that mu is equal to minus x. Then I can substitute mu into equation 2. So that's going to give us, okay, right here, lambda equals minus x over 2y. So now I can work on getting rid of lambda by substituting into 1. Now from there, that's going to give me that x squared is equal to y times z. So now we want to work on our constraint equations. So we focus on g1 and try to put everything in terms of y. So what we'll do is I'm going to replace the x squared with yz. Then we're going to replace the z with y minus 1. OK, so that's these steps here. Now, that's going to give us quadratic and y. And we solve that using the quadratic equation. We get y equal to 1 and minus 1 half. I want to take those values of y, put them back into our constraint equations, see what points come out, then evaluate, look for a maximum and minimum. So if we have y equal to 1, then we have z is equal to 0, x squared is equal to 0. So I get the point 0, 1, 0. If we take x times z, we get 0. If we let y be equal to minus 1 half, then we'll have z equal to minus 3 halves. We'll have x squared is equal to 3 fourths, or x is equal to plus minus square root of 3 over 2. So we get two solutions there. So we get these two points here. I solve for x times z, we get minus 3 squared root of 3 over 4 and 3 squared of 3 over 4. Those are all the points that come out. 
So now I have to do is compare the different x times z values. So we see here we get our maximum, here we get our minimum, and that agrees with the result that we had in part one. 